We're about to go into a world-class retro toy convention, and it's happening 1.7 miles from my house. We're talking rare toys, vintage toys, modern toys, even cosplay, and I'm going to show it all to you. And if you hang around till the end of the video, I'll even show you what I bought this weekend. So let's grab our VIP pass and head on in. Welcome to Toy Heaven, also known as the 2021 Retro Toy Convention, put on by the good folks at Toy Federation in Greer, South Carolina. This year's edition included an incredible assortment of vintage and modern action figures, as well as video games, cosplay, and the occasional truly weird item. I saw toys I never thought I would see in person, as well as some I wish I had never seen. Oh, and Pops. Lots and lots of pops. So let's dig in and take a look behind the scenes at Retro Toy Con 2021. This is the third annual con put on by Toy Federation, and there were a dizzying amount of toys being sold by over 40 vendors. Any retro toy convention is going to have its fair share of the big three from the 1980s, Star Wars, G.I. Joe, and Transformers. But this show had so much more to offer than just those three. Like heading back to the 1970s with that denim-clad demigod, the Six Million Dollar Man. Is that the Six Million Dollar Man's boss? No, but we did find his bionic transport and repair station. But if there was one toy line that defined the 1970s, it was Mego and their world's greatest superheroes. There were several vendors selling loose, and even some carded and boxed Mego figures. Here you can see some of the other properties that Mego made in their 8-inch cloth costume lines, including Wizard of Oz, Dukes of Hazard, Star Trek, and Planet of the Apes. I mean, how can you resist this candy-colored goodness? But as cool as the figures were, I was more excited to see some of the less common accessories by Mego from that era like Batman's mobile Bat Lab, or this Joker Mobile that's incredibly hard to find in good condition, which is probably why this one had an asking price of $1,000. And while I'm not interested in everything that Mego produced in the 1970s, there was a particular item that caught my eye. But as great as the 1970s were, any kid like me who grew up in the 1980s knows what decade was the best for toys. Let's start with one of the most mind-blowing of all the after-school cartoons, Voltron. Check out these die-cast metal Voltron mechs in perfect condition, as well as some rare import Voltron toys, a playset, and all five pilots of the Voltron Lions. It wasn't just the famous lines that were totally awesome in the 80s. Action figures were innovating in new ways, like the holograms on these Visionaries figures. Or all of those wacky play features on the real Ghostbusters line. Ghostbusters is one of the most underrated toy lines of the decade, with a ton of different figures, a firehouse playset, multiple bad guys and ghosts, and of course, their happening hearse, the Ecto-1. Pretty sure these guys are big fans. Everything was fair game in the 80s, and any property could have a toy line. From deserving shows like Knight Rider with this sweet Michael Knight figure in kit, to this awesome collection of A-Team items, including a talking Mr. T. But why stop there? How about a remote-controlled Airwolf helicopter? Or a Fall Guy stunt plane with its very own Lee Majors figure? Nothing was off-limits. Even R-rated movies like RoboCop got toys. Or you can reenact the horrors of being a prisoner of war in a Vietnamese jungle with this Rambo playset. Even my wife's childhood was represented with this table full of strawberry shortcake, Polly Pockets, Barbies, and those little PVC Smurf figures that she swears she had over a hundred of as a kid. Makes more sense why we ended up together, huh? The 80s bled into the 1990s, where just about any lame property that could be licensed was. And unfortunately, that tended to water down the toy aisles a bit. I mean, this kind of tells you everything you need to know, right? 
there were a few things outside of classic toys on display, including several vendors selling vintage video games, along with some truly classic gaming consoles to go with them. And while there's no way you can ever escape from Pokemon cards, this was one of my favorite discoveries. Wax packs of trading cards from all kinds of insane properties, such as Space 1999, 21 Jump Street, Saturday Night Fever, and yes, the Andy Griffith Show. Hey, I'll trade you my 1982 Dale Murphy for your Aunt B rookie card. The show had some great guests as well, including Francois Chow, who played Shredder in the second Turtles movie, Arthur Berghardt, the voice actor behind Destro, and yes, Sergeant Slaughter, who at 73 years old still has the most impressive jawline I have ever seen. But for me, as a toy YouTuber, I got the most out of spending a few minutes chatting with Pixel Dan, who is just as friendly and just as knowledgeable as he appears in his videos. He's a really great guy. I also met Vincent and Brendan from Vasco Toys. They make these incredible dioramas by hand. I've included a link in the description. One of my goals for year two of carbon scoring is to up my action figure photography game, and these custom-made backdrops are going to be a huge part of that. Now let me show you some of the rarest, most unique toys that I saw at the show. I knew that this two and a half foot long Flash Gordon rocket ship existed, but I never thought I would see one complete in package. Even though there's a new Dune movie back in theaters, you never see a complete set of toys from the 1980s film version. Masters of the Universe was well represented. Heck, even my beloved 2000X line got some love. But check out how awesome this complete set of She-Ra Princess of Power toys is. Speaking of a complete set, check out these awesome cosplayers. Masters of the Universe was famous for their tremendous large-scale playsets like Snake Mountain and Castle Grayskull. But the holy grail for He-Man enthusiasts is the mythical Eternia playset. This thing didn't even last long enough for the show to officially start, as there were guys brokering a deal for it as I was taking these picks. Let's just say the final price was more than the cost of my first car. I might have mentioned there were some pops for sale at the show, but how about this Elvis pop with an asking price of $2,500? Modern toys were well represented, with Marvel Legends taking center stage for a number of vendors. I still can't believe the prices some of these recently released toys command. I mean, this retro cardback Spidey is less than a year old, and they were asking 120 bucks for it. For that price, you could have walked around the corner and bought both the original red and blue and black suit Spidey Classic figures, and still had enough change left over to get this creepy-ass Robin thing. Oh, if only that Robin were the worst thing I ever saw. This little nightmare is going to haunt my dreams. Which seems like an appropriate time to show you this two-foot-tall Chucky doll. Let's get back to some highlights, like this nice collection of Kenner's Superpowers figures, which would go really well in this boxed Hall of Justice playset. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures were everywhere, but I was really itching for this complete Terrordrome playset. It was more than meets the eye for this sweet display of Transformers toys, including a G1 vintage Megatron. And, of course, Star Wars. Mint in package, loose, vintage, modern, anything you were looking for as far as Star Wars, you could find it at the show. There were even packaged figures from the Ewoks cartoon. Perhaps the hottest vintage line was G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Joe was everywhere. It certainly didn't hurt that several of the special guests at the show were tied to the classic cartoon. Or maybe the new G.I. Joe Classified 6-inch figures have sparked renewed interest in one of my favorite toy lines of the 80s. But no matter how you cut it, there were G.I. Joes aplenty. Although, there were a lot fewer after I got finished. Let me show you what I bought at the show. 
I've always been a huge Joe fan, so I took this opportunity to expand the ranks a little. While I have all the original figures from 82 to 84, I ventured out into some of the later releases. I picked up seven of the 1985 Joes, starting with Infantry Trooper Footloose, a Cobra Eel, everybody's favorite Warrant Officer Flint, Bazooka, the oh-so-cool Dusty, our Firefighter Barbecue, and Quick Kick. There were five 86 Joes that caught my eye. The Sniper Lowlight and the Laser Fighter Sci-Fi, General Hawk to lead the team and Beachhead to lead them into the field, and finally, the Paramedic Lifeline. And while the later years of G.I. Joe started to get a little funky, there were still some pretty cool army men to have. Like 1987's Lieutenant Falcon, 88's Hit and Run, and one of my all-time favorite missing Joes, Tunnel Rat. So with all these new figs, we need a way to get them around. That's where this comes in. The Tomahawk Helicopter, complete with pilot airlift. This thing holds a ton of Joes and has a number of sweet play features as well. It was re-released a few years ago as a Toys R Us exclusive, but I'm pretty psyched to now have the original. But I wasn't done. I grabbed the one that got away as a kid, the Whale Hovercraft, complete with its pilot cutter. She's missing a few parts, and several others are in need of repair, but this monster is a welcome addition to any collection, and it's really inspiring me to find a way to put together my USS flag. But I've saved the best for last. I thought this vinyl box from Mego was a carrying case for the 8-inch World's Greatest Superhero Toys, and I was actually going to buy it just because of how cool the package art is. Then, this happened. Holy crap, it's an actual Hall of Justice playset! With sliding panels and a translocation chamber? I, I'm going to have to do an entire video on this thing alone. It is incredible! Thanks for coming along for this in-depth look at Retro Toy Con 2021. And don't forget to like and subscribe to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures.